Hi everyone, it's Yaniv Hoffman back with another video and this time on TLS protocol. Every day we send and receive the enormous amount of data across the internet and this data is sent and received in the form of packets. These packets of data could be easily intercepted if not protected through proper security protocols. If data is public such as blog posts or news articles, then it's not that a big deal. But if it contains private information, such as username, password, credit card number, personal information, professional information, and etc., then it's a serious concern because anyone can see what we send and what we receive. Transport Layer Security, TLS, is a successor of Secure uh, Socket Layer, SSL, defines a mechanism to ensure secure transmission of our data over the internet. And today we'll talk about TLS, how it works, the TLS handshake, what, why it's uh, important to have TLS, why it's hard to hack TLS, and other important features of TLS. But first, let's touch briefly about its history. And there are many different versions of SSL and TLS as technology and attacks have evolved, so protocol has evolved uh, as well. It all started with SSL version 1 in 1994 and very quickly moved to SSL version 2 a year after and another year with SSL uh, version 3. As the attacks evolved and the vulnerability, more vulnerability and exploit were discovered, TLS was developed to harden the security. And that was introduced in 1999. Then TLS 1.1 and TLS 1.2. And finally, in 2018, TLS 1.3. Now, today, the world uses TLS. And although most of the world uses TLS, most people, including me many times, still refer it to SSL. And we and they say things like SSL certificate or SSL VPN. So it's good time to understand the differences and be precise, although it's not a big deal. And when someone is saying, or including me SSL, we understand. Now, one of the nicest reflections to get visibility on SSL is through a site of Qualys at, and a dashboard that is called uh, Pulse. And Pulse is a continuous and global dashboard for monitoring the quality of SSL TLS support over time across 150,000 websites based on the most popular sites in the world. Some interesting statistics in the usage of TLS, which shows that TLS 1.2 and 1.3 are the leading supported protocols, while you can see that TLS 1.3 is supported by almost 60% of all the sites. Other interesting indicators that provide good picture on the protocol are key strength distribution, various vulnerabilities, of, on version of uh, TLS and, and many more cool and insightful uh, indicators. So do access uh, this uh, link, I will leave it in the description and review it by yourself. So what is TLS? Whenever we browse the internet, we see a padlock icon on the browser, right? Which means that a secure session is established. I think that's everyone understands. Now, this secure session is established by TLS, which is a cryptographic protocol, means to provide end-to-end -end security between the server, client, and vice versa. This protocol is also used for secure transmission of data to other applications, such as email, file transfer, video, audio conferencing, instant messaging, voice over IP, as well as internet services. Now, TLS is a vault form of SSL, which was developed, by the way, by Netscape Communication, that wanted to secure communication over the internet with their browser. It is implemented on top of the TCP IP layer, and in order to encrypt the data is sent by the applications such as HTTP, FTP, SMTP, and IMAP. Now, if you click on the padlock and it varies between the browsers, we can see the different uh, results, but we can see something that looks like uh, this. TLS at AES, it can be maybe different, I will speak about it, 128 GCM, SHA-256, 128-bit keys, TLS 1.3. So let's break it. The TLS is the transport layer security as we spoke. The AES-128 is the actual encryption, it's the cipher, and the 128 is the key size. GCM, I'm not going to speak about, it's the mode of uh, operation, Google it if, 
if you want to know more. And SHA-256 is the ASH function. Things like turning a secret into key and creating a mesh authentication code. By the way, instead of the AES can be RSA or ECDHE, which is a DEFI Elman elliptic curve that is mostly used today as it's more secured. Now, there are three main objectives for uh, T TLS, and it's the famous CIA. The first one is the confidentiality, and this refers to protecting information such that only those with authorized access will have it. Second is the integrity, relates to the veracity and reliability of data, and data must be authentic, and uh, any attempts to alter it must be detectable, of course. And third, and last but not least, is availability. is a crucial component because data is only useful if it is accessible, right? So availability ensures that data can be accessed when needed and will continue to function when required. So let's discuss the TLS handshake stepwise process to secure the communication between server and client. I know many of you think it's maybe too complicated. I try to simplify it in high level, but still I think it's important to know. So in the first step, the client must complete a three-way TCP handshake with the server to initiate the process. You remember, it's built on the TCP IP. So the client sends the scene, the server replies with the CNAC, and then the client replies with the NAC. The next step is the TLS initiation step in which the client notifies the server that he wants to initiate a TLS secure connection with him. So how we will do it? The client will send the client a low message which contains the maximum TLS version client can support. It can be different versions that the client support, TLS 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, probably 1.2 between 1.2 and 1.3. A random number of the client will speak about it later. And list of cipher suites supported by the client. Then the server will respond with a confirmation as a server hello. And remember here, it's important, the server is the element that decide what will be supported uh, here. So the server is choosing the TLS version that he wants to work with, and he chooses the ciphers and, and provides the random number of its own. Now that we know what can be supported, it's easier and we need to move to the encryption side of things. So the server will send certificate with public key in it. And also, if we are speaking about the Fielman, the server will also send a server key exchange. Most probably today, one of the cipher will be elliptic curve, but not a mass, as it can be an RSA uh, for the public message. Now, the server will also include the digital signature with our set of the previous messages summarized using private key of the server the one that goes with the public key that is on the certificate. And by that, the server role is over. Now the digital certified that was sent in the previous uh, uh, step confirms the identity of the server. If the client does not believe that the certificate is legitimate, then it will not share any private data with the server. Hence, it will drop the co connection. Otherwise, it will continue its communication with the server. The client will also reply with a client key exchange with its public uh, value, which will be used mathematically as part of the Diffie-Hellman process to create what we call a pre-master secret. Now, since both the client and the server have the same pre-master secret, they combine with the random numbers we mentioned before, it's of its own, and that becomes the master secret itself. That one is used to any kind of key material. The client is going to send a chain cipher spec message, meaning I have all the information I need to encrypt the data, and the next message you will see from me is going to be encrypted. And the client will send the finished message with summary of all messages before. So that's key. If that's failed, the handshake is failed. As a response, the server will send back the chain cipher spec and finish message, similarly to the client. And that's it. So why TLS is important? And TLS is considered as important security protocol in the internet because it plays a critical role in ensuring that the data that is being transmitted over the internet is protected from men in the middle attacks and data tampering. And today TLS is becoming a major security protocol for all the web browsers and the websites. 
The protocol was developed in response to mitigate the risk of increasing number of threats that attackers were using to infiltrate communication between the server and the client. Its importance lies in the fact that it protects client privacy and security while sending the data over the internet. Without TLS, our sensitive and private information, such as credit cards, detail, username, and passwords, all would be vulnerable and exposed to the cyber criminals. In the absence of TLS, third parties and state agencies would be able to monitor our emails, browsing, habits, and other personal information, and will not be able to send our private information over the internet in a secure manner. So why it is hard to hack TLS? And if you are using TLS while browsing the internet, a question might bother you that can TLS can be hacked? Well, technically, it's possible to hack TLS, but the probability of hacking TLS is incredibly slim if you are not a state uh, nation. So this means that there are very small chances to break the TLS, and one could not do it on their own. Even the strongest supercomputer will take use to break the encryption that is being used in the TLS. The current version of TLS 1.3 uses strong encryption algorithm to encrypt and decrypt the communication between the client and the server. The information that pass through TLS are encrypted and decrypted using a 256-bit private key. Any experienced hacker, or even not an hacker, will need to figure out up to two power of 256 different numbers of combinations while cracking TLS private key by using brute forcing. That's about only 115 quadrillion possible combination. That's a lot of combination, right? So how hard it will be for current computers to figure out this combination? Pretty impossible. Some people like me think that quantum computers will hack the TLS protocol one day, but currently there is not single computer on Earth that I know that is able to crack the private key that is being used in TLS. By the way, if you want to see my video about quantum computing threats on the encryption, please do so. I will leave a link in the description. Common question that I usually get is, does SSL or TLS prevent your website from hacking? Well, the answer is no, because TLS only encrypts the communication between the client and the server and ensures that any communication that will take place between server and client will be made private and secure. So let's say website is your house that contains several doors. By locking one of the door, will not secure other door of your house from criminals, right? Think of TLS as a lock that only protects communication between your site and a visitor web browser. So for complete protection of your site, you have to take additional security measures and multi-layer approach, such as DDoS, WAF, firewall, antivirus, bot detection, etc. So benefits of TLS. One, it provides end-to-end -end encryption between server and uh, client. Second, it's built directly into each application as opposed to other security protocols. And third, TLS provides granular control over the information that is transmitted across the internet. Last but not least, it also offers logging and auditing functionalities to further harden the security. So what are the challenges, you may ask? And since TLS works at the top of the OSI model, therefore each layer and application will create their own secure communication in order to gain full authenticated and encrypted communication. This makes the communication process more complex. Some of the applications do not have the ability to support the newer version of TLS. And TLS is managed application by application at each layer of the OC model to gain granular control over the security and privacy of the communication. This process increases the overhead cost of managing the TLS. Threat actors are constantly working to discover exploits that might endanger the confidentiality and integrity of TLS based secure communication because TLS has gained its popularity and is using in everyday communication across the internet. So to conclude, every day we share our sensitive data online to do banking transaction, shopping uh, on e-commerce platform, login to social website, etc. 
our sensitive information will be exposed publicly if not protected online. If this data is gained by cybercriminal, then we will be in great trouble. To avoid leaking of personal and sensitive information, we need to double protect our data, both client and server side. This security and privacy is provided by one of the best security protocols, known as TLS, which encrypts data during transit all the way from the source to the destination. This means that even if the attackers gain access to the data in transit, they will not be able to figure it out because it is nearly impossible to act TLS. With that, I complete the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you're interested in more thorough explanation about TLS and SSL, please write in the description and we'll make another uh, video. If you have another uh, idea for cybersecurity topics, please do so as well. And last but not least, only 10% of the viewers are actually subscribers. So it will help me a lot if you like and subscribe. Thank you very much and see you in the next time.